Skeet along. That's right. <laughs> thanks oh, for you having skeet. us, bud. Uh, hey, man. I'll tell you. Nice you place know, you got here. Thank you. We were uh, we were talking about Disney afternoons, and you know, tail end of my my childhood cartoon watching career ended with those. And at the time, I had no idea that I would be sitting next to royalty in the world of and when are voice they arriving? acting. Where they're coming when? They are. They're on their way. He's talking about you guys. I see. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Disney it's it's fun to be up here with you guys. What was what was on Disney afternoon? It was yeah. oh, it was yeah. Goof Troop. Well, Jimmy's yes. let's see, Darkwing Duck. Yeah. Goof Troop. Bonkers. Uh, Tailspin. Bonkers. We were bonkers. Bonkers. We bonked. Uh, G gummy Bears, yes, gummy bears. Um, uh, Chippendale Rescue Chip Rangers, bear. right? Um, and the no fact bears. is that we all kind of cross-pollinated every one of those shows. It was yeah, true enough. Time. Yeah, that was fairly common then, right? For oh, like yeah. you would get involved with one production, and then they would take like a character you were involved with, and like all of a sudden you were on like seven shows. Yeah, well, once well, people found out that you were capable... Yeah, it was more of that. It was less about the character, and then, and then it was more about building kind of a rep. Yeah. We were sort of a rep company in a way, It was, right? it was a real a, small yeah. pool, and we did a lot of those shows together. Yeah. But I just I, hung around B&B Studios and snuck in. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, to be fair, that Jimmy was the guy. I mean, Jimmy was... He really was the king of the Disney afternoon, because yeah. you were on... You were really, like a lead character on a number of shows. Yeah, that's true. I was on every, a fan told me two years ago that I was in every single, not every episode, but every single show. Absolutely. Wow. So that was kind of fun. But that's, that's yeah, amazing to me. I played an apostrophe on one show. So. I think I, I played your wife like twice. Twice. We've been months. married, yes. Bonkers? Yes. And it was, you know, she was. Still? Yeah. But what we're doing here happened at the sessions all <laughs> the time. Yeah. That was back when everybody recorded together. It doesn't happen very yes. often anymore. And it was much more practical. Yeah, but the whole crew, would, the whole cast would show up. So you have the whole ensemble there, and it was insanity. Yeah. Do you remember like firing Nerf guns oh, at the yeah. booth and oh, yeah. just losing our minds? And we had a director. Usually it was Ginny McSwain, Ginny. Ooh, but so Ginny would pour gas on the fire. Yeah, she would. And <laughs> we all had incredible amounts of fun. You, you need an instigator for hard. sure. We would laugh so hard. Oh. The sessions just ran on and on because we were wasting so much time making each other laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we had uh, a number of actors who, well, sadly, there are a couple who aren't here anymore. We got Christine yeah. Um, Cavanaugh. Yeah, Chris Cavanaugh. Dana. Dana Hill. Sweet little Dana Hill. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what, Goof Troop in particular, that Goofy movie yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, everybody talks about the Goofy movie. Everybody loves it. A lot of fun. Mind blowing. But Jimmy was Darkwing. And then I got to be Steel Beak on that show. That's right. Beautiful. Yeah, we've been friends and enemies and all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, it's true. Many times, <laughs> all down through the years. And we've been married many times. Many times. <laughs> yes. That's great. Well, Let's get you, conjugal. <laughs> uh, Jim, I'm going to tell you, and this is just a personal thing, and, and, and I know this is the only time we had you on stage this weekend, but... You are on my Mount Rushmore of Disney, oh, hey, like by far. Thanks. Wow. And I, you know, no one wants to be put in the Hall of Fame because I understand that it feels like we're past it. But like early inductee for sure, because what you've Thank done, you. you have done everything. But more importantly, what you've done with Pete, you've you've taken this unlikable character yeah. that made him really oh, likable. Sure? Well, thank you. Well, yeah. that, that was the challenge. It's. You know, you, you know, be a lovable bastard. Well, and Pete's still around. Pete's part of all the Disney stuff that yeah. we do, all the Mickey Mouse stuff that we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Pete's live and kicking. Yeah. The thing is, it, it, he's still, it, you know, the closest thing to a villain. you got to have somebody to yeah. go in there and stir up the pot, you know. Yeah. Jimmy, so I'm there. <laughs> the, uh, you started doing, uh, didn't you start doing Tigger and Pooh during the Disney afternoon stuff? Or was that Probably, post? Yeah, something like that. Because, I mean, you've been uh, 35 do. years. Well, it, uh, well, Pooh was first, you yeah. know. And God bless, and her amazing dad was still with us. That's and, right. And uh, he, he was, you know, I, I'm going to brag on your dad. Oh, dear. Family Go ahead. Been here. He, he was the coolest guy in the world. Because, you know, when I was a little kid, I, I remember seeing, uh, it, yeah, the top, yeah, absolutely. You know, Knucklehead Smith and Jerry Mahoney. And, and he was an idol of mine. And I just was telling April... 
I, I read his book when I was like five years old, How to Be a Ventriloquist, and there was this one bit in there where it says, okay, now you go like this, and you put your teeth together, and you go, hey, how you doing? And then the next line that her dad wrote was, you have just made your first ventriloquistic sound. And I went, ma, I just made my first ventriloquistic sound. And they, and they and they said, I get him a feed of barbitol. Yeah. And and uh, red. And then I, you know, I, I was privileged to, to know your dad over the years. And uh, he was the first. Was he was the just, original too. Oh, it was. A, I remember being on the lot on the Disney lot. My dad was working on something. We didn't know what it was. He was being real close to the vest. Something for Disney. It's really great. You really love it. I was, I was little, and we showed up at the lot in that little theater where they would, you know, where they kind of oh, showed yeah. the little short. We've been there, seen our stuff many times. Yeah. And uh, they played it, and there was a guy dressed in a giant blue outfit, and a guy dressed as Tigger. I was like, well, I don't know who these characters are. <laughs> and uh, started, and it was Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. And we were like, yeah. oh, my God, Tigger. Yeah. That's your Tigger. It was amazing. Yes. And he, it was so good, and he did it for so many years. It was great. Yes, it was. And we've, we've all been in that little theater. Many I times. used to, the Roger Rabbit shorts that I did, were they screened them there. The first time I was in the same theater as... Winnie the Pooh was weird. On Roger Rabbit, you were the... Um, uh, I was the mom in the beginning, but the, 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 the see her like, be a good boy, and I'll shut up, good to me. And then I was the yeah, baby, just the, nah, 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 the whole time. Yeah. But, um, so uh, let me tell you a story about that. So I was working as a secretary, uh, and I had just gotten this part in Roger Rabbit. And they called me up and they said, uh, the casting director wants to know if you could make baby sounds. And when you're first starting in the business, you're like, yeah, like, sure. You know, I can do that. I can juggle. I can, but, you know. what, but what the cash nerd didn't tell you was he wanted for his own personal use. <laughs> that was different. That was didn't, later. I see. Yeah. So, you know, and if, when you're just starting out, you'll say you can do anything because you want the work. So I said, yeah, I can do baby sounds. No problem. He said, okay, well, he's going to call you in a minute, and he wants you to hear you do the baby sounds. And I said, now? Because I was at work. I was typing. Now? <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, okay. So he calls. I go, okay, can you just give me just a minute? And I went to the file room, and I locked the door. And I said, okay. <laughs> Did all that stuff. Yeah. And then he goes, okay, you can, it's yours. You can have the job. I said, oh, great, great, great. And I opened the door to come out of the file room, and everybody in the office is oh, looking like, God. what the hell happened to her? <laughs> she had like a breakdown, screaming like a baby in the file room. Yes, professionally. It's bad. It's a bad thing. That's the, and you're also Clarabelle. How long yeah, have you been Clarabelle at Disney? Since like ninety, blah blah blah. blah. I don't know. Fantastic. Ninety. There's another job. They and wander you over yonder. Yeah, that was great. Show. That was a good show. But that was another job where they call you up and they say, "Can you do Clarabelle?" You're like, yeah. "Sure." I yeah. don't even know what she sounded like, you know. <laughs> and so you go to. I went to the job and it was a talking storybook, and there's Wayne Allwine. Recording like this with Rusey, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, was, right? with you know. Rusey who plays Minnie Mouse sitting on his lap, and they're mic like that. And I'm like, actors. By, by the way, method yeah. actors. You but guys, it turns out they were Mickey married. Was, but Mickey and Minnie were married. They were married. In real life. I thought they were just being method. In real life. You know? Yeah. Cutest like, couple you ever, ever, so ever, ever. Uh, Two people so in love you couldn't stand it. it. A, exactly. Utterly precious. And I don't even know how many times I'd be working with yeah. one or the other. And I'd be working with Wayne at L.A. Studios yeah. or something. And then Rusi, his wife, who's Minnie, would come in to see him. And he'd say, oh, there's my sweet They princess. were so cute. They were so and unbelievably cute. Because I'm cut from the cloth of which I am, I remember <laughs> once saying to them together, you know, you guys, you really are the poster children for how we would like all our relationships to be. They laughed because they had to. Yes. But oh, they were man. humiliated and, for you. And you'll you'll be pleased to know. And if she was here, she would insist I tell the story. We did uh, this thing called, it, there was a doll, Teddy Ruxpin talked. Teddy Ruxpin, And that, those yeah. people kept the idea going from Mother Goose. And Mother Goose was going to tell nursery rhymes. And, of course, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy was cast as Mother Goose. I don't know if you remember that. It was probably the 90s, 80s. Uh, he, he was goofy back then. That's right. Wow. But, uh, but yeah, I think he was in that. And, and Rusi, the sweetest thing in the world, yeah. mouth of a sailor. Yes. Mouth of a Come on. That's why I said that. She was you know, and she, and she couldn't get through this one line with the princess and the frog, not, not the, 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 ori the original one, not the movie. But it's where, um, or the frog princess. And she would, and the princess leaned over and kissed him right on the tip. 
of his little <laughs> green <laughs> She couldn't get through the line. And it was head. And that was bad enough. And she, she, she was such a sailor, she could not get, it took 20 minutes later. We all had to leave the room yeah. so that she could get through it without an but audience. There, but in her defense, there are some lines Ooh. that we come across and we're like, do you, do you know what you're yeah. doing, right? Like, you yeah, know the yeah. triangle bush that, there, that was so popular, remember the yeah. triangle? <laughs> really? Do you really want to say it? Like, they're like, yeah, we do. And, you know the, you yeah. know. Oh, Christ. And what's really great is to see, I, I remember I did, um, uh, a character called 625 on Lilo and Stitch yeah. TV. I did that too. And I got a call after doing 13 episodes and they decided they wanted to have a celebrity uh, do the part. I said, okay, been replaced before, won't be the last time. So they listened to a couple of TV celebrities and then came back and said, you know what, Rob, we decided we want to stick with you, but we want to retool the character a little bit. Great. So I found myself during the uh, first, during the Gulf War, I remember we're watching all this stuff on TV and I'm in with Disney trying to make sure that the, the, the talking sandwich maker <laughs> is, a pro, is the right talking sandwich. Half a dozen Disney suits with a collective 50 years of Ivy League Great. college between yeah, them. Yeah. And I couldn't resist, I was thinking, oh, you guys are, are Hill helping me to try to find the best talking experiment sandwich maker voice and right about now bam we've just launched another strike against you know oh, it was so weird. Ter Iraq we really got our priorities in order and you guys have a collective five million dollars worth of college between you yeah. crazy business man I had a good one when um, there was a, a line in Darkwing Duck he had a gas gun and it was suck gas evil doer uh -oh. And uh, so ABC call, called up big Disney, big, big, this uh -oh. is back when they were separate companies. And they're going, um, now when Jim says, uh, what, what exactly is he saying? <laughs> and they're in it and suck gas, evil doer. Say it again. Suck gas, evil doer. Can you hit the G? <laughs> Can you really just hit that G for me? Okay, good. Yeah, thanks. Super, super. Thanks. Suck. Suck ass. You, know, you don't want to say suck ass. No, you don't want to say that. I never said that. I would never. Oh, well. Do you remember uh, Mighty Ducks? Were you guys on that at all? I, I only did uh, a couple of episodes, but I did it, yeah. Ian Zeering was on it. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, and Brad I, Garrett. I was and, eh, it, was a good, it, was a, it was a good cast. Yeah. One, ep, one season. <laughs> so we recorded the whole season. They called me up and they go, we need you to come back in and do pickups for every episode. Oh my God. I said, what happened? They said, they didn't... Uh, clear Duck World. Somebody owns it. So, Duck World? Yeah. So you have to come back and say Puck World. I said, okay. They had to pay me for all 13 episodes wow. all over again to go nice. and say, uh, buh, buh, Puck. You're right? I was like, okay, great. So two weeks later, they call us up. Uh, we need you to come in and do pickups again. I said, for what? For the World. entire season. Why? We didn't clear Dragonus. The Tim Curry was the dragon yeah. character. You, yeah. Legal didn't clear it. I said, well, we're going to say Draconis instead. I said, Went back in to do 13 episodes. What a gig. Yeah. It was Earth. good. Three seasons. You got for three seasons. seasons. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I wish they would always be like that. Yeah. <laughs> I used to try and do that. <laughs> that they would have to give me. There was one episode. Literally I literally forget don't a line what or show, But I was playing a, a, a hick. And, and they were like hick bank robbers or something. And I said, uh, well, it ain't mine. It must be urine. Urine. And so uh, I got had to go back in. Oh, good for you! Look yeah, I, you I would I would lay those. Uh, uh, it sounds like you're saying urine. Ding ding ding. <laughs> you got That's it. what I said. And, and they went, well, we can't say that. I go, oh, I better get another session for uh, Yeah. Or they'll say, uh, they'll say, oh, the song's not ready yet. We'll have you. Like, yes. Let me come back to do the song. Yeah. Oh, God, I got two. I got two. But uh, it, it was like this. You just focus with a stick, yeah. and that's all it takes. And it's yeah, the most yeah. glorious thing to be up here with these two. Uh, is such a joy and a privilege. Yeah. I'm having wonderful flashbacks. Yes. <laughs> the trip was really fun. Jim's, that was a Jim's fun over show. there sweating. And <laughs> that no, was no. a fun <laughs> show. That was my first show as an adult. Oof, yeah. What? I had done, done shows as a kid. Yeah. And I did 
a couple of movies, but it was my first series as a grown-up. That was a blast. That was a great show. Oh, yeah. It was so that much was, fun. Uh, and I feel like we made... Oh, and Nancy Cartwright was on that. Yeah. Nancy Cartwright oh, yeah. Simpson was on that show. That was your too. sister, right? P yeah, she P played Pistol. my sister. Pistol Pete. Yeah. 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 And one of my favorite things, Bill Farmer plays Goofy. Oh. And we played... This was at a, a studio called Fidelity. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it was a nice place. And they, they had it sort of in a semi-round, like there was yeah. one, two, three mics, four mics, five, six, seven. So it was in sort of like a, a horseshoe. And Bill plays Goofy, but he plays Goofy for a reason. He, he walks in one day, how's everybody? And he knocks the one thing, and he, oh, he knocked over three mics, whoa, and he falls over, and, he, and, and we all just stood there and went, Wow, that's life is good. Night casting. Life is good. Wahoo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's knocking shit over. God, that sounds just like him, too. It was, oh. How's but, everybody doing? You know what, Billy, I'll tell you what, though. Like you guys, that is a singular, unique skill to take a, a classic and a franchise character that the bar is super high, and then Billy and Jimmy come in and, and take and it ruin everything for 35 years uh -huh. yeah. and with wonderful incredible acting uh, and the movie and goof the goofy movie it's pretty good yeah. those scenes when Jason Marsden who plays Max and Bill and Billy playing goofy are you know they go on a, on a vacation together and they're having a lot of parental and children troubles trying to understand one another it is spot on. And the acting is world class, and it, it makes you weep, it makes you laugh, and parents watch it, and now people who are parents themselves watch it, yeah, and they totally get it. There's a lot of nostalgia. And in that movie. when this knucklehead was doing the uh, Winnie the Pooh movie with Ewan McGregor, I remember telling Jimmy that uh, I had seen the trailer for the, um, the Winnie the Pooh movie, and I said, Jimmy. I'm telling you what, there isn't an, uh, an Oscar category yet for voice talent in Hollywood. We have our own category for animated features. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, dude, you, you are lighting it up. Literally a month later, there was a, a cover story on Vanity Fair. Oh, yeah. And it said, there is an Oscar-worthy performance in Winnie the Pooh, and it isn't Ewan McGregor. Wow. And they were talking about Jimmy. So... It is about acting, folks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. buddy. What a guy. What a man. God bless you. You're going to take him everywhere. Just have him walk into rooms. <laughs> you know, you guys, this, this program, you know, talking specifically about Goof Troop, one of the things that I think is unique is that Disney is very calculated. We know that, right? They're, they're, they're very, they do, things are done very methodically, very oh, yeah. on purpose, right? You bet. When you guys were cast for this particular show, did you feel like they cast you because of other characters and they wanted you to follow that? I, I think of your character, Jim, of your character on the show here. Is, they're very similar, right? So With PJ, you mean? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know that they had... My character was a secondary character. I mean, it was, I think, important in the context of some of the episodes, but... Did the, you, didn't you, like, come in later? Like, didn't you think you replaced somebody? Like, Jennifer Darling or I, somebody was... I don't know. I, I don't remember. All I remember was that it was that the first me? time I had done that kind of back of my throat. I think that, I, I think did. you did. I think it's they, kind they of like started with a girl you know, and it didn't sound right. And then goofball came guy. But, um, but I, the, there wasn't anything that, that, in my case, I thought there was any particularly particular, but... With the classic characters, Clarabelle, yeah, of course, and Pooh and Tigger and Goofy. That's like a voice they're, match. So they're very, very regimented. Jimmy, these guys can speak to that much better than I. Well, you know, I, I had a conversation with Julie Dolan, right? And uh, Julie Dolan played Princess Leia and Rebel and, and the Rebels in, in Clone Wars, and she talked about how they were so specific on sounding like Carrie Fisher. That like they continued to roll her and roll her and roll her and make her listen to Carrie and, and everything. And I just I didn't know if maybe in your guys' roles they were so specific about a, a, a character in particular. I know obviously when you have an iconic character, but well, I guess that's more of a, a thing for you, Robin. When they bring in a character like this, like did they say, you know, can you sound more like?
this character we've heard you do, or is it no? I we mean, want this specifically, and you need to find it. Well, when it's a new character, yeah. then I'm in more involved in the process, right. and it's a collaborative effort. Once you get the job, then you fine tune it. But I did that does happen. Um, I did an, uh, an animated version of The Mask in which I got to be Jim Carrey for a whole lot less money. And um, in that case, they would do the same thing. They would play, yeah. you know, Robin, when the movie, when Jim does this, and finally it was Tim Curry, because I was getting a little bit frustrated. I love Jim Carrey, but when you're doing uh, 13 episodes, even if you're only doing one season, you're doing five and a half hours yeah. of a character that Jim did for two hours. And, and so things will come up and they'll say, well, in the movie, Jim did this. Yeah, but this part, this wasn't in the movie. Yeah. And so I'm trying to interpret what Jim would say. And I understand why they want to do that, especially at Disney. They're, they're very precious about the... Well, because kids can hear it. Yes. Kids can, that's not the same. Right, and yeah. that's totally different. Um, so like I said, when these guys take over a classic character... There are billions of dollars involved. Right. And so they are very precious with it. But they don't always know. Like when, when we did 101 Dalmatians, the series. Corella. I was Corella. They called me and they said, we want you to sound just like the movie. Yeah. So, you know, you do like, a doll. You try to sound as much as you can, right? And then they said, oh, you sound too much like the movie. I'm like, well, so they didn't give me the part. So they gave it to Tress McGill. And Tress had a completely different take on it, and they fired her after three seasons, uh, three episodes, because she didn't sound like the movie. And then they hired me again because they wanted me to sound. So they don't always know, right. you know. Mm -hmm. But the, it, sometimes they want you to do like Turk, like when I did Tarzan. Yeah. They didn't want yeah. me to sound exactly like Rosie O'Donnell. You were in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but they wanted like a vibe. So you don't always, they don't always know. And then sometimes you'll go in to do a brand new character, and they'll just show you a drawing. And you just look at that, and you're like, well, like why did Miss Finster in Recess? They had a drawing of her. And I thought, well, well, she's very jowly. And I thought, well, maybe that informs some of the sound that comes out of that. So that's, I, it turned out I was right, you know, or they liked it. But they don't, the thing they always say is, we'll know it when we hear it. Yeah. Um, that's great. <laughs> so you, you don't always know. That roll you have to just be back. lucky. I mean, okay, well, then hear it. <laughs> yeah, please hear it. I have to go to the bathroom. Please hear it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you guys have all been involved with, like, uh, I, I think a Clarabelle for you. That like it's a character that not is the first one in line, but is so important to the storylines when she's involved. Like super important. Like the character can't miss. It's like here's a little cameo, comes out, boom, gone. And that that moment, you have to do everything that everyone gets all this time to do yeah. in that one moment. That has to be hard. Um you know, they know what they need from you. And if they can communicate it clearly, you can give it to them. You know, so it's that, that's not so, so hard. And in fact, being an ancillary kind of character like that is kind of great. It is. Because you come in, you do, you know, I, like I'll do a show in a half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, you don't get it by the hour. It also gives it's you awesome. a chance to do something really cool. It also gives you a chance to, to sort of red flag yourself and come up with something that, yeah. that makes the character more appealing to the writers and the producers. Yeah. Like, wow, we really like what April's doing with this. Well, Jim is a master of that. Totally. I mean, I've seen so many sessions where Jim will just say, let me let me do it, let me do something. And a, a line will come out that's so much better than what's what written. written. Yeah. And or a, or a thing, or throw an improv in there that's so good. Yeah. And they, nine out of times, ten, nine out of ten times, I'll take it. It ends up getting you a gig. And then I, I always punish them by doing one as written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that teaches that. That'll teach you, you know. Did you ever have, like, a, I did a show for Saban called The Kids of Room 402 or something like that. A show for Saban? It was Saban. Oh, boy. So, Got a lot of residuals on that one. Yeah. Well, at least so, he'll, steal, he'll stab you in the front. It was yeah. a bad, bad, bad job. It was a bad job. But there was a writer who was sitting in the audience, and I do the line. It was a teacher, and I'll say, well, that isn't true. And she'll come up, uh, as written, please. And it was, that is not true. So she would stop you on contractions. She would, if you inverted it, she was really serious about it. But it's very un unusual. Right. Yeah. It is Usually unusual. They know because they want the product to be as good as possible. It doesn't matter who beats the joke, right? Yeah. yeah. And if, if that level of, you know, being anal is, is that, you're not going to have a hit. Yeah. And they because didn't. It, yeah. They didn't. everything that we've worked on and we're discussing today has been deeply collaborative, where people are willing to say, Jimmy, that's way better. Yeah. Even the writers will say, so good enough for yeah, me. Yeah. And that, 
creative energy ends up on the screen. Yeah. The people are all about, oh, no, no, don't use a contraction here. Yeah, it's shy. Yeah. Well, you know, oftentimes, you know, when, when you're on a long time series like that, the, you know, because the, the writers are there. Because they really love their stuff. And so you always, I, I, I've always, I know you have, we'll do it as written, but you end up doing another take anyway. And then if you, you know, spit out something else that's a little funnier or a little more cogent, you know, like um, uh, a good example, I was Ray in Prince to the Frog. And the line was, uh, oh, that's going to leave a mark because he got whacked on a rock. And so I said, okay, that's going to leave a mark. And everybody's howling with laughter. And, and, uh, and I said, well, let's do another one. And then, and then boom, I think I done chipped my favorite tooth. Because yeah. he only had five of them. And, the, and then everybody laughed. And they go, okay, that's it. Yeah. You know, so. Better line. You know, if well, you geez, do, you got to do one like they wrote it, right? And then do one like that should be. I mean, that, that <laughs> helps when, like, the character's in the room. So, like, here, we can see without a doubt that you guys have incredible chemistry. And yeah. that chemistry has to, it gets portrayed. And if you don't have that chemistry, it's very hard to get to that point. Yeah. And, it, and you're, you're more comfortable, I would think, making those jokes, making those adjustments, and making those changes. Yeah. Because I would always crack each other up when, when she would do something and everybody would, And then, you're, you know, you're trying not to ruin the take. And that really helps. Because help. nowadays we're all doing it flying solo and you're yeah. sitting yeah. in your room. It okay. helped a lot yeah. when people would laugh at your, well, you know. A high that time raises all boats, honestly. And I have no trouble saying, uh, when you're surrounded by people who are more talented than you, it's not false modesty. It's the goddamn truth. You can't help but get better. If you play golf with people who can hit it 50 yards past you and put the lights out of it, you get better. Or you don't. And in this circumstance, when you're surrounded by people like April and Jim and, and Townsend and Pat Fraley and Tammy and Bear and... and uh, well, maybe Brad not. Pierre, it goes on. <laughs> Nancy, Car over and over and over again. You, it's almost osmotic. You just soak in this talent that's such an incredibly high level. It's like that because you start to play. Yes. You know, it's not. It's there's a lot of joy in it, and so it's like I'm. I'm going to see what you know. Watch what I can do. And it's I'm a joyful you laugh laughmanship. It gets yeah. really playful. And it's, makes, the river's flowing. You got to swim. Yes, and well, it makes everybody better. Well, in doing that, <clears throat> I want to challenge you guys a little bit. Oh, I want you guys. Pam, right uh, Pam Adlon. Remember, remember some of the stuff that Pam Adlon would say? Oh, oh. Yes. It, Pam Adlon, whom you guys know from Better Things now on oh, FX. And also Bobby on King of the Hill. Yes, Bobby on King of the Hill is, oh. we love her and she. So funny. And Chris Best Summer. The business. They have <laughs> the most foul oh my God. mouths in the, the world. The stuff that came out. And they would say, look, we've got Disney, you know. Oh, yes. People, important people coming in. Don't, you know, watch yourself. Charlie Adler. She, yeah. she couldn't, she couldn't, it was These great. These people, I mean, you get the, the, oh, Paul, you would eat this <laughs> stuff up. Talk about smart, funny torture. <laughs> You see these people like Charlie and Pammy and so Free funny. Summer and all these Disney folks come in. They've got their little Disney character pin. I mean, um, uh, Disney, um, what are they, cast member pins oh, and yes, stuff? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and then Charlie starts throwing out F-bombs. Oh, my God. Pam the same way. If you have to do that, I'm going to make you blah, blah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Remember that she had, she had a really filthy word in rhinestones on her sweater? Do you remember yeah. that? And they yeah. were like... Don't say anything dirty because Disney's going to be here. And she's like, all right. Sure. She took her claws off and it was like in rhinestones across her chest. We we're like, oh my God. It's great. It's great. <laughs> There's something. But you know what else? Do you remember like to having to come up with pejoratives that the, that the standard and practices would, would allow? Yes. Like we would like, I remember during um, oh, 100 yeah. Month Dalmatian, would be like, you moron. You can't say moron. You can't say moron. You cretin. We can't say cretin. Can you say crouton? And you're like, what the, really? Yeah. Yeah. Moron. Moron, idiot. Like they were just. And they, can you come up with something else? Can you come yeah. Up with yeah. Yeah. I tried to get turd socket by, <laughs> and it, it didn't didn't no. go. Didn't fly. Good one. He got hard to believe, can, right? I know. It's a common. It. Everybody uses that turd socket. Maybe not. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> was that in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably. I told you. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, and I remember we did a thing in in Animaniacs, in fact, where. Yakko is uh, playing Hercule Poirot, uh, oh. Poirot, and he's saying, have you, um, we need to take fingerprints, fingerprints. And they cut to a shot of Dot Warner holding Prince, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the musician. 
And I and she said, and I say, no, no, fingerprints. And she goes, I don't think so. And throws them out yeah. the window. Uh -huh. See, get it? And we okay. never in a million years thought that would get by S and P, but it did. Fingerprints. Wow. Yes. Well, we, coming back to the triangle bush, did you see that on, what's that? on, on the, the triangle bush? No. No. You saw this, didn't you? What? Uh, Joel McHale. Oh, but I like it. On talks, uh, Joel McHale, when he had like a talk soup kind of a show. You were on it. You should find oh, the yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was, you know, Clarabelle's like, well, you look for the magic bush, and when you push the button in the bush, fireworks go off. We're like, and, and you were too, you were like, I, I'm not going to look for that bush today. I'm tired. It was just, it was, it was insane. That's the happiest place on yeah, earth. It was insane. They sneak wow. so much old stuff in there. So yeah, much. No I did an episode of Mickey Mouse uh, Funhouse last week called The Curse of the Krusty Clam. Oh. I said, I don't, yeah. really? Do you guys really? Jimmy and I were monsters there. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. But they, I think they know, don't they? I would hope so. And then they'll beat you up on the word Cretan, so it's yeah. very hard to, it's hard to know what the... I mean, yeah. you know, you know, some of that stuff is written like that. You, you alluded be. to it. It's got And be. it has to be. I mean, I, I'm an 80s cartoon kid, and you can go back and watch those classic episodes of some of that 80s cartoons. Yeah. And like, like watching yeah. Masters of the Universe, and I'll sit there and be... Like, <laughs> Well, all cartoons have been that high play for like, no, like, forever, right? What's that? Like, all cartoons have been like that. Oh, like, like yeah. Like, well, you watch Tex Avery and all that. And there's a, definitely a through line for adults and something for yeah. kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, of course, now, there's all sort of Rick and Morty, almost every episode, finds a line and then crosses it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. you know? And, in fact, I, the first episode I did of Rick and Morty, my first lines were, where are my testicles, Summer? Oh, yeah. It was a dog who had been fixed and he had he thought this just isn't gonna do <laughs> so where are my testicles where where were they where they were apparently at Move. the vets yeah. Uh, yeah. The vet? oh yeah they were disposed of really small paperweights yes it was a rhetorical question <laughs> oh i see yeah oh I rhetorical see. canine but the point is that yeah i mean uh, but also uh, remember like we're talking about it is adults ostensible adults who write this stuff and they want it to be a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes that there are, tell me if you agree with this, there are times when the writers will write stuff and they, they will give a couple of examples of things that they know aren't gonna make it, but there's something just a little bit under the surface yeah. that will allow, that, that, that one will make it through. through. Yeah. Yeah. They write three to get one in. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's so it's, but the whole bottom line is, it's a great freaking way to pay for shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lovely way to make a living. And you yeah, work with people whom you would choose to have in your life. It's the greatest thing in the world. Well, and that's, I, I mean, you guys have attributed that. You goof troop thing. I think this is something that, to move forward, you guys could really, really take this somewhere. And um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean if, hey, from if, your lips to God's checkbook. Kid. If Sir Mouse is listening, you I know, loved that show. And we, I loved the Disney I thought afternoon. it was, well... And I yeah. loved One Saturday Morning, too. Well, that was yes. great. Yeah. And, yeah. in fact, I learned a very valuable lesson a few years ago when they did the 20, 20th anniversary of the Goofy movie. I got a call from Disney saying, hey, we're doing this thing down at D23. Come on down. We're going to celebrate it. Everybody was there. It was great. And uh, I, I was really naive. I said, oh, that was a sweet little movie. That sweet little movie is a big freaking deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had no idea how precious that movie is to so many people. Yeah. That's true. And, and it but, was. But you, know, you often don't, it doesn't clock it all right. the way because sometimes, I mean, I was talking to Paul about this on the way down here. You're in a booth, sometimes by yourself, yes. talking into the void. You know, making silly noises into the yeah. void, talking like a cow into the void or whatever it is. And you kind of go home and you forget and that's it. And you don't realize that this is, you're creating something that's really going to touch people yes. until you come someplace like here or exactly. make a wish brings kids to a session. Oh, God, and you yeah. realize how important that you're, you know, I used to think I'm not really doing anything yeah. important. And then you meet these kids and these people. Who, I meet people so often who are like, oh my God, my childhood, you made my childhood so much better. And yeah, most, oh, like, yeah. My mom was sick or whatever. And you get that all the time when yeah. you're at cons, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, we all have stories that will just put you on your knees. Uh, yeah. You know, latchkey kids who come home and they'll say, you know, uh, uh, this one, I won't, I won't bring everybody down with this, but it was a pair of twins and the, the boy and a girl. And she was sick, she had to stay home. And uh, the, the, 
kid came up, God bless him, and he said, I think you pretty much saved my life. Yeah. And I said, well, uh -huh, okay, thank you. He says, well, no, I mean, my, we would, in the morning, we would, before we were on our way to school, my mom, my dad left us. We don't know where he went. Unbelievable. And I'll go, oh, God, here we go. You know, God bless this kid. And he says, um, so we'd watch a new adventures of Winnie Pooh in the morning. Then my mom would set the VCR, good old videotape recorder, and they it, it record from 2 to 4, which I think was maybe the Disney afternoon time. Yeah, yeah. Then he said, then we'd get home, we'd rewind the tape and watch those four shows, and you were in them all. And then by that time, we were safe, and we were kind of doing our homework, mm -hmm. and mom was home. And so you yeah. got us through the whole thing. And I was wow. like, thank you so much for telling oh. me that. And you don't even think about it in the moment. You do. Yeah. Yes. You're just going to work, you know. And then, uh, you know, then, then people. That's you know, exactly it. People tell us all the time. And what's really Beautiful. precious is people come up and say, I know you hear this all the time. <laughs> as though they're apologizing. Yeah. Yes, but it's the first time I'm hearing it from you. <laughs> and that is important. And like Jimmy says, man, we... We hear people all the time who say, oh my God, my childhood was great because of this or that. Yeah. Then we hear people, like Jimmy, example, where they say, but for cartoons, but for the Disney afternoon, but for Goof Troop, my childhood was in the frickin' dumper. Yeah. It was awful, except for every day yeah. at four o'clock. How on earth can we quantify yeah. what that means it's to us? Humbling. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. the best. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, we, we feel that way as fans. We, you know, appreciate the work that you guys put in and the time and effort that you guys attribute to it because it does resonate. It does matter. It we does. are nostalgic. We do love thank this. You. And I, I know I've gone back and watched old cartoons. I, I, talked to, I talked to Pat the other day. I went and watched Brave Star again. Yeah. And the reason being is because oh, as yeah. a kid... I loved Brave Star, yeah. and I had to go watch it again. And as adults, we're doing that, and we're back with you guys again. But I want to say from everybody out here and all of your fans that we appreciate and love you guys Thank for you. what you've meant to our childhoods Thank you very and much. to us as adults. Okay. Thank you, guys. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rob Paulson, Thank Jim you. Cummings, and April Winchell. Let's go a round of applause. Thanks a lot, you God guys. God bless. God bless you.